I got a lot of records. <laughs> wow, so loud. <laughs> oh my god. And a lot of those records are quite rare. I feel like, you know, we do random picks, we go through slowly and show off some of my collection, but I want to show you guys some of the rarest records I own. I'm so excited. <laughs> It is time for part three of my rarest records. Yeah! Coming at you. Boom! That's enough. All right, are you excited to see some of my rarest records? I'm excited. <laughs> to be or not to be? You Dragon Ball Z? Yeah. Let's get started. Record number one. Have, do you recognize any of these characters? I recognize them all. Oh, name them all. Go. Kidding, I don't. I know about half of them. Wolverine. Yep. Hulk. Yep. Don't know. Is that like Storm? Yeah. Spider Man. Iron Man. Which I just saw for the first time. It was amazing. I don't know who the F that is. Really? Mm -hmm. Mega Man. Mega Man. Nope. Nope. Marvel vs. Capcom. Marvel vs. Capcom is a fighting game series, an arcade style fighting game series where you play as three people and you tag team Can against three other people. Have a record of its music? No. It's almost cooler than that. Okay. Back at Comic Con years ago, they had a promotion, this must have been 2009, 10 maybe, before vinyl was even like a huge thing. They had 200 copies at the Capcom booth of this record, which you could only get, I believe, if you purchased over $500 worth of items there. Whoa, so um, you're a crazy person. I wasn't at that convention. Oh. I got this in the aftermarket for a great price. That's really cool. So what this is, is not the, uh, this is not the soundtrack to Marvel vs. Capcom 2. But instead, this is a hip hop mixtape. What? That is even cooler. Yeah. So, so random. The mixtape features a lot of underground rappers, not necessarily your big names from the time. Uh, but you've got some classic rappers like Talib Kweli, Raekwon, Hieroglyphics, DJ Qbert, E40, uh, Oh No, and a bunch of other really good stuff. And the kicker, it's on colored vinyl. Ooh. It's beautiful, Ooh. translucent blue record. Uh, it's like cobalt blue. Yeah, it's this is a really gorgeous record color. I'm a huge fan of That's this. That's beautiful. I've always had this on my want list knowing it existed, and I never really saw it pop up for a fair price online, something I was willing to pay. And one day. One day. I was at Amoeba. Tell us. I was in the hip hop section. <laughs> I looked up on the wall, and they had this cover staring <gasps> back at me for $75. And then you cried. And I wept. <laughs> you wept. So I looked on Discogs, and of course the cheapest copy was like 150, 160 bucks. So I asked them to take it off the wall. I looked at it. And? The condition was immaculate. And I had to purchase it. I was like, you know what? I love hip hop, love video games. And this is such a rare piece. There's 200 copies of this. Like, If you spent 500 or more, I mean, that's crazy. This was a no brainer. I mean, this is something that doesn't pop up very often. If you want this online, you're gonna spend easily three digits. So um, this is one of my rarest records. That's cool. Has my approval. This is a little band called Architecture in Helsinki. Have you heard of them? No. It's so their first album called Fingers Crossed. This was pressed on the now defunct record label Trifecta Records. Now, this is one of my favorite indie pop, indie folk kind of albums from the mid 2000s, I think 2003. Some of these songs were some of the first songs I got into when I was into indie music. And when I first got into records, I was like, I'd love to own that record. Some of the songs like uh, Scissor Paper Rock, The Owls Go, Kindling. Like is this the all the lyrics next to the song title? Yeah. That's so cool. Isn't that cool? I've never seen that before. The back's really cool. They have all the lyrics next to it. Usually they have like a lyric sheet inside. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But this is just like on the back and I guess these are members of the band or people involved with the, with the band itself. But nice. I went to go look for it and uh, it was, I didn't even see a copy for sale on eBay or on Discogs and I messaged the band and I was like, hey, uh, what's going on with that record? And they actually responded to me because they have a career after this. I think this is where they peaked personally, but they have a pretty long career after this. And the band was like, uh, yeah, that's out of print. And I was like, oh, will you, will you repress it? Just me being naive and not knowing how represses work. This was like right when I got into records. And they were like, we don't have the rights to it. Like, I don't think it's gonna get repressed. It's just like, I, it's, you know, it's, it's gone. Whoever has copies has copies because Trifecta Records is not who they were on as of their second record and they, you know, stuck with a bigger label at that point. So I guess Trifecta, which no longer exists, has the rights to this, and I looked it up further, there's 500 copies of this that exist. It was pressed in Australia. So you might be able to find one used in Australia somewhere. That's so cool. But I had this on my want list for years. It's in mint condition too. Yeah, it's like super clean, the disc is super clean, and it finally popped up on my want list one day randomly for like, I think it was like, $70. Wow. And I literally, without even thinking, I just bought it. I like immediately <laughs> went add to cart, buy, and I was like, I'm never gonna see this again. And fun fact, I've never seen it pop up again. That's awesome. So this is incredibly rare. Copies are probably lost 
like just like in someone's closet in Australia, like they're just not going to repress it unless they somehow acquire the rights. So this is one of my rarest records. It goes for historically, you know, a lot of money, but it never pops up for sale, which is why it's so rare. Cool. You should listen to the album. I think yeah. you like it. Let's listen to it after this. Fine. I'll make the rules. And what's next? An album with one of your favorite songs on it. Okay. Let's see. If you left it up to me. This is Jack's Mannequin. Yeah. And this is Everything in Transit, which is their magnum opus. Oh, now, it's such a good album. Andrew McMahon was in something corporate, amazing pop punk band. Now he did Jack's Mannequin after for three albums, and now he has a solo career where he has two albums. And everything he does is amazing. I've seen him at festivals, he's so energetic, he loves his fans. So this is the 10th anniversary edition repress because the original was out of print and going for a lot of money, like easily over $100 because classic album. And the repress, there were 2,500 copies of it on this beautiful, beautiful colored vinyl. Ooh, I'm excited. What it matches that? the cover so oh. nicely. Oh, oh, you know, you've showed me this in the past because I remember looking at this this beautiful, like deep, smoky black marbling. Yeah, it's like it's, it's like so similar pretty. blue to the uh, to the Marvel Capcom uh, record. You except showed me the... this right when we started hanging out, actually. Oh and yeah. I, it was just I was like, hey, look at this cool record I have. Wow. <laughs> look at this cool record. Clearly, I'm I'm a, I'm a, I'm a hit at parties. <laughs> 2,500 copies on this colorway, and the cheapest copy available on Discogs as of this video is $250. Oh, what? It's because people don't want to give this record up. It sold out incredibly fast. You can find a black copy for, I don't know, maybe like 40, 50, 60 bucks. To get the color version, honestly, you're gonna spend at least 150. The average it sells for on Discogs is about 150. Like the guy listing it for two something might not get that price for it, but this album is so good. It, it is. is so like, Emo and beachy it's and just, fun. You, it just hits you so close to home. This that song "Bruise" number three on this album is si one of my favorite songs of all time. Every time I yeah. hear it, side it's... side one is just amazing. Holiday from Real mixtape "Bruised," I'm ready. Mm -hmm. La 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 and dark blue. Like this is like a, this is like the greatest blue, hits. But the whole album's great. Even I mean the second side's great. And then there's the uh, afterward, which are like bonus songs for this this edition and and like a bruised acoustic version. <gasps> <laughs> really stoked to own this. Uh, I don't think I'd be able to fork up the uh, 150 plus for it now, but it's one of my favorite albums, so I, you know, I might have if I, if I didn't jump and the gun. Just like that, it's gone. Hold it like that. It's gonna fall out. <laughs> I was careful. I feel that. There's, there's, I know. I know. Texture. I noticed. There's it's texture. embossed. It's a em nice word usage. That's the. <laughs> What do you do, art or something? No. Two more records to show you. One is a long story. The other is a somewhat long story. What do you want to hear first? Um. Long story. Cool, it's not even that long. I just want to do that one next anyway. I am a big fan of the musical styling uh, known as grunge. I talk about it every now and then. And my favorite, why are you laughing? <laughs> I'm a huge fan of the band Alice in Chains. So this is not a Pearl Jam story for once. What? What? Oh my God. Baby? Baby? Something is not right. Huh? Pearl Jam? Stop. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, it's Pearl Jam story time, Scoop. God. Every time I go to Amoeba, I look for the Alice in Chains section. It's usually just a bunch of reissues. It's never anything interesting except once. I went and I saw something I didn't know what it was. So what it was, was this We Die Young with the uh, Alice in Chains on the front. And uh, that's not an album of theirs. So I was like, I don't know what this is. It was $30 and I looked it up on Discogs and apparently it was an EP with the songs We Die Young, It Ain't Like That, and Killing Yourself from 1990. So this is this predates uh, their first album, Facelift, which is some consider the best. So I was like, how much does That's this go for? That's interesting. Right. Yeah. So I was like, how much does this go for? And it goes for like 70, 80, 90 dollars. And I was like, score. Score. <laughs> but that's not where it ends. Okay. It says right here, a sticker that I didn't even read. It says a sticker. <laughs> it says a sticker. Right here, there's a sticker I didn't even read. And I just bought it because I saw the price. And I was like, I bet even if it's a little messed up, worth the price, bought it brought it home, opened it, oh God. and I was super confused because I was looking at it and I was like, huh, this isn't, this, there's way more tracks on here than, than the three song EP. So I looked further into it online. Oh, the suspense. I hit the mother load for Alice in Chains fans. Facelift never had an American pressing. There's a couple pressings overseas in like Brazil. No official US pressing and those pressings go for like 150, 200 plus dollars because it's like one of the most iconic grunge albums ever. What happened was in the We Die Young sleeves back in 1990, they did a promo pressing of Facelift 
that they inserted into some of these sleeves and sent to like radio stations and labels and stuff like that as promo. That's what this sticker is. It says contains facelift, the debut album by Alice in Chains. <gasps> That's so cool. So the person who priced this had no idea because this goes for easily $200. Wow. Um, if not more, this if you can neat. even find it. This is the full album of Facelift, the only official US pressing of it. It sounds incredible. I listened to it right when I got home and I was hoping there was no like issue with it. Flawless. Perfect. Flawless. Yeah, of course. This is one of the most wanted reissues of an album of like the community is all like they want it really badly. And um, I have it. It has That's some of their so best cool. songs. We, uh, you know, Man I'm in the gonna box. break it in half. No! Man in the Box, uh, Sea of Sorrow. Uh, I mean, this this album's uh, put you down. Uh, it, this is just like, this, this is, this so is grunge. Cool. This is grunge. And I couldn't believe that I found this for 30 bucks. This might have been my best vinyl score ever in terms of like price to rarity ratio. This is awesome. And I'll probably still buy an official reissue with the actual sleeve because the facelift cover is really cool. But this is just a great story. Gold. And finally, finally, it's not a Too Many Records video unless I talk about grunge and Mark Kozlik. So we've done one of those two things. Now we're going to my boy Marky K. Was that a K? <laughs> You're like Marky, Marky K. K. <laughs> this is what a K is, right? <laughs> well, a little rundown if you guys don't know, if you haven't watched any of my videos. Mark Kozlik is a prolific, amazing songwriter, folk songwriter from the 90s and early 2000s. And unfortunately, he's still making music because his new music is ridiculous and rambling and makes no sense and isn't melodic and is hard to listen to. But his early stuff is some of the most beautiful folk music that I know. And he started off as in the band Red House Painters, and then he went on to Sun Kill Moon, which was his moniker that he did his solo career under. Now, Sun Kill Moon's albums are very, very difficult to find on vinyl. It's the first couple ones go for easily triple digits because they're all out of print. Mark Kozlik is a dick. He doesn't like to repress his stuff. He likes the scarcity. He likes to have these low quantities and like, fans will pay the crazy money because the music is so that. good. Yeah. But he's also just like a curmudgeon. He's like an old curmudgeon, You're just like. He's an old curmudgeon. He has... You're an old curmudgeon. Stop using SAT words. Stop using SAT words, Matt. That's so like funny. I was saying, Mark Kozlik is amazing and arguably my favorite album of his is his first, Ghost of the Great Highway. Now I've had it on my want list for a very long time. Anytime it pops up, three, four hundred dollars on Discogs. I'm definitely not gonna spend that on an album. But came kind of close to that when I saw it in person for the first and only time at my Mecca, Amoeba. I was there, I was looking at the counter behind their register where they have their rarest records, and this popped out of me. I mean, this cover is incredibly iconic for me just because I've looked it's at it for me a long a time. Uh, what's, what's creepy about it? The little kid? Yeah. It looks like an old photo. It's like really... Uh, and it like says Ghosts grain. of the Great Highway with a picture of a little kid. I, I mean, I dig it. You know, I, I love my creepy. And it comes with like an obi strip style thing. Like Japanese pressings tend to have this obi strip on the side. Usually it's kind of wrapped around, not so much this this way it says includes the vinyl only bonus track gentle moon an acoustic version which is beautiful by the way this was his first album as as you know song kill moon and like i said it goes for three four hundred dollars they have it on their wall for 250 but but it also <gasps> Ooh, show to peoples it's signed by him in the gatefold now That's this awesome. this marks a rare era of mark Kozlik where he was actually signing records because he hates the vinyl community. He's talked about it in like interviews. I think he has a song where he references the bros that go up to him and I'll talk about vinyl and he just wishes there were chicks talking to him. So, <laughs> it, it, it might have been an interview, but. Sounds um, like a douchebag. <laughs> a signed copy of what is probably my favorite of his albums and it was below what I saw it for online. They were asking 250. I didn't buy it right away. I went home. Pondered, I pondered, thought about it. I literally thought of nothing options. else until I went back, I think the next day. Yeah. Because I was like, I was like, you know what? If I'm still thinking about this tomorrow, I'm gonna get it. And of course I woke up like, I gotta get it. So <laughs> I went to Amoeba and it was still on the wall and I bought it. There's a promo record of this that's on marbled vinyl, which looks really cool. I'm not gonna be picky. Uh, the black one still goes for those crazy prices. If I can find a marble one and swap it into this sleeve, it'll be like the ultimate Ghost of the Great Highway version. This is one of my rarest records. Like I said, it goes for three, four hundred dollars and it's with the OB strip in clean condition with a signature. Can't beat that. So those are five of my rarest records. I have even more records to show you guys that are incredibly rare, but this was just the next installment. Which is really fascinating. It was really cool. Right? I'm stoked on this. Yeah, this, yeah. yeah. I mean, like, if you want to rob me right now, you would make a nice little- I'm, I'm going to kill you and rob you and then make a lot of money off of your records. Anyway, thanks for watching. Please. Subscribe to this guy. Wow. Subscribe to him. Tell your friends about his channel. And uh, don't forget to follow him on Instagram. Too and Twitter. Records. Yeah, and Twitter. Too many records underscore. Her Instagram is in the description if you want to see more of her.
artwork, because she's an incredible artist. If you like Mr. Robot, she just did a drawing of Rami Malek that's like life, it's like life-like, <laughs> perfect. She did it in like a couple hours. <laughs> a couple, well, it was more like, like eight hours eight hours that's that's a couple <laughs> Thank unbelievable you. You're so sweet. um but please leave a comment and let me know what some of your rarest records are if you've acquired some since the last time you commented on one of these videos i'd love to hear what you picked up thank you for watching more thank videos you. very soon